Okay, so we don't have to do any more comsat. We should just go for the lunar impactor again. Oh, uh, we must have gotten the Viking engines now, which will not be very reliable. I guess now is as good a time as- Wow, 105,000! These guys aren't as good in vacuum as the LR-105 either. Prospectively, before I unlock it. It seems like we have all the configurations just like right here. There's higher thrust, but lower efficiency. But longer burn time. Well, let's see. Well, that seems... Well, that's heavier, though. But... Um, Delta V-wise, it's not horrible. But... Our thrust-weight ratio is not good enough. It does diminish our Delta V like this. It seems like... We should shrink these a little bit. Because we're using the hypergolic fuels now. Hmm, but replacing the LR-105s with the Viking 4s is not so attractive. It's not really that much more efficiency than the sea level ones. It's only got a rate burn time of Two minutes and five seconds, though, which is less than the boosters. The boosters will last longer. <laughs> can you do three minutes? Yeah, you can. Well, it's somewhat less performance. That would be our Ariane uh, 1. I'm not enthusiastic about the lesser capabilities. Oh, there's this blue streak one. Which is like exactly like, well, it's derived from the R Rocketdyne S3. It's even got Mark II and uh, Mark III and Mark IV. Nope, nothing good that we can replace the Araby with. Whatever, make it point three. I mean, because it doesn't like me doing 0.25. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe... is it okay with that? Oh, I guess it's okay. Alright. 0.25 it is. Back to the moon. To smash into it! I don't know. Can we trust the Araby to go a little bit longer? The Blue Streak engine is cheaper. But it's a knockoff of the S3. 2 minutes 36 seconds. Well, that gets us into the tooled range. But the core is gonna burn for longer. Maybe we should put two. Okay, well that's not too bad. Nice thing about this, though, is we don't even have to fix the GSE, because kerosene and oxygen is the same. Oh, this is burning for too short a time. With two of them, they will once again last a shorter time than the boosters. And if we put more, we'll need a new core. Okay, maybe just one, then. Uh, that'll push its burn time too far. Do we have any upgrades for it right now? It says we could purchase this Mark III, but it doesn't really give us more burn time. It does have more thrust. What if we just shrink that a whole lot to what we actually can use? What's the diameter of that tank? I mean the length, 1.7. We'll just have that length. It'll only go for a little bit longer than the boosters, the core. Because it doesn't have the burn time. Otherwise, say 10 there. That'll cost some. A lot. <laughs> Let's tool that size. That'll be exactly the burn time of these. 
We can't get the larch. Same burn time, more thrust though. Maybe we should set it to the larch size. Though that's pushing the burn time of the core engine. Two minutes 36 seconds is going for two minutes 50. Overall, we're lighter. Oops, those are clipping in. And we have better thrust weight ratio. But we do have to upgrade the propellant GSC. So we'll have our Ariana 1. I thought we were going to use the Viking engines, but I'm not feeling it. They're not giving me what I need, and they're really expensive. So we're going with the Blue Streak engines. The reliability isn't great, but we do have some flight data on them because they're descended from the S3 engine. So I'm going to unlock this now. So yes, not the Ariana one I planned for, but it's the Ariana one we've got. We will see if it can smack a probe into the moon. ELA-4 will take until March. Okay, final check. Do we have the science that we want on it? The TV camera, for Ranger though, I feel like I'm obligated to do the TV camera. Ariana 1, finally. Let's bump that up. The ComSat one we don't need anymore. I'll cue a backup too. Okay, but before we do that, we get to try out the probe version of our X-15 plane. Wow, it's expensive. That X-15 engine really makes things... Well, the probe core on it is pretty big too. Alright. Let's give it a try. Atmospheric all piled on. Put it all up. And ignition. Uh, we've got a problem. Uh oh. Oh, we couldn't rotate. Hmm. That looks like it ought to be rotatable. Maybe we can cut down on the time. Oh, I never... I, it was so expensive because I didn't tool the things. Okay, well, fine. Tool the things. We'll need it for the final version anyway. Okay. It might be too heavy for our control surfaces and wing though. Well, we'll have to manage our... ...speeds. Our V1, VR, and V2 speeds a little bit better. Oh, fudge. I don't think we have enough control authority. Yeah, I'll have to think about that one. I think we need more wing. Let's try and get to this Ariana one. Gonna have to test those engines. I don't know how well that's gonna work out for us. Alright. Throw up. SAS on. Ignition. Dramatic music. We have one failure on the core. Uh, Alright. All that lining up. Okay, that's being recovered. Let's continue the renovation. I didn't continue the construction at the renovated pad. ELA-4. Then we'll have to have some engineers there. No, higher 100? That's not too bad. I'll get it done in September of next year. No, that's too long. 
Well, we're not going to do that launch anytime soon. We can move them from the hangar. Now we took six days to roll out, six days to roll back. The moon should be in a nice position, maybe. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition. Well, we've got three engines. And launch. More thrust weight ratio. These blue streak engines. Slash intended Europa engines. Shame that our first launch of the Ariana 1 rocket should be at nighttime. Okay, booster set. Oh, they worked. This is technically burning for longer than its rated burn time, so we'll see how long it holds out. Looks good. Separation. Ah, oh, well, fairings. Now, nah, okay, okay. Without the fairings, it's okay. Fine. And light. Oh, we're lopsided. Possibly okay. Well, not as good as I'd like it, but we'll see. Our inclination is as good as we've had it so far. Uh, we're still a little bit early. But uh, there's practically zero inclination should help. Yeah, well, there's a smack. How much delta V do we have? We have plenty. We actually have to stop it ahead of time. Seems pretty definitive. In terms of smackiness. Separation and ignition. Well, let's see. Please have enough RCS. <laughs> it's not gonna get good pictures, it's gonna be on the opposite side of the sun. Well, that seems fine, right? And shut down avionics. Recharging. Up we go. Up, oh, it's trying to fool me. Better give me my moon encounter. Okay, there we go. Can't see the moon though because of the lighting situation. Please be going fast enough. <laughs> okay. Still have comms. Buys physical, do visible imaging. Don't stop. How dare you? Okay, we're above the orbital, but it's, I think it's the surface speed. Uh, well, we should be. Hopefully, you'll read it properly. We, we should be fast enough. Okay, it's happy. And we smacked. We have our first lunar impactor. It is done. Well, we probably need to complete that ComSat contract. Uh, program. Okay. Watch spacecraft hit the moon. Com network. Yeah, we're past. We better. We don't want to lose any reputation or anything. Well, we got the 15 science as well. And we're not doing anything. This 1960 orbital rocketry looks fancy, but. It doesn't really have. I don't think they have anything that we would care about. Well, I don't know, uh, this one, the Mark IV configuration for the RZ-2, maybe. Stability requires early human spaceflight material science. A lot of things do. So, okay, we should go with early human spaceflight material science, otherwise we're not going to get any of these things. And then we can get this hydrazine thruster. 
with two ignitions. <laughs> and 57 seconds of burn time. This one's only got 40. If our current plan to get into orbit around the moon fails, this might be the thing. So let's examine this. We've been with this needing about 2,200 to get to the moon and we've got 2,500. Let's keep that in mind with this stage. And we're going to add a new engine and some extra tanks to this. And what we want to do is size this also. This, this still has quite a bit. Oh, but they're on the same stage. Okay, so we want to size this down. I mean, that's enough to get into an orbit around the moon. And in fact, uh, I think that's still within our... Oh, a little bit more in our controllable mass. Maybe we should just keep it tight. Did I not tool that 10 ton avionic unit? I thought I had. Uh, okay. I thought I tooled that one at the top too. I guess I must have forgotten. Well, we could make it bigger now then. <laughs> I mean, um, so should we tool it at that size or should we make it 0.3 here? That could get us into a nice tight orbit around the moon. But that's too much for this. Alright, whatever. Do those things. And let me scrap the other Ariana 1 we had been building on the... on this complex. Yeah, let's just try this. Oh! Oh! Tanicki Smiths, our, our esteemed engineer who flew all those flights has retired. We need a new Kerbal. Okay, Mariana Thames, an actual pilot. Though we seem to have very good uh, results with engineers. Viola. Very musical name. Okay, Viola. Only six years though. Our previous engineer would probably have had to have trained up on the X-15 anyway, so... It's gotta take her 160 days to train for the X-15. Okay, wow, we get uh, early human spaceflight material science pretty quickly. SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. Our RZ2s. Are good to go. Alright, boosters did well. Okay. Core did its thing. Well, we have a... Oh yeah, the fairings. Now we're okay. Inclination not quite as good this time. And, well, that's a little bit early. We'll have to use the two ignitions that we have on the little upper stage, I think. Our ignition point at Quito... Uh, our ignition point is far enough from Quito that it's a little bit worrisome. Kuru itself is over there. We might be able to stretch there, I don't know. Well, we better go on to the next stage. Oh no! No! We lost comms just when I was gonna... No! Stop!
Oh, you only needed a tiny little burn, and now you've gone out of the Earth system. We are now very eccentric. Now we get comms back! It was like, just a lapse for the tiny little bit where we needed it, and then Kuru is communicating with us. If only we had waited like a few seconds or something before igniting that darn thing. <sighs> well, I guess we're gonna figure out when it actually loses comms. Let's see. It doesn't have anything interesting to send back, I don't think. Yep, well anyway, we aren't getting comms from interplanetary space. Ah, oh, poor little probe. Alright. I think I'll wrap it up here with that. We tried to make orbit around the moon, but well, we, we didn't get to the moon. So, we'll have to try again, and I'll... Probably just launch another one of those, it wasn't too bad. It's just a matter of comms there. So with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.